So there's a lot of, of great benefits with the DST. They're widely unknown. DST is a great solution, but they're widely unknown. You know, CPAs, attorneys, real estate brokers, realtors, again, 95% of these folks, they have no idea they exist. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Our guest today is Ben Carmona. He's managing partner at Perch Wealth. They have uh, something that may be a very valuable to you as an investor. And I think even as an operator, you need to know about this and because it may affect you personally as well, but also it could be a great solution for your investors. Uh, often we've had investors who want to 1031 into our deals and we may not have anything in that moment and they're desperate, right? They're needing something. And our guest today, Ben, may have that answer for you. He's going to elaborate, elaborate on, you know, the 1031 exchange and how it can be used to go into the Delaware Statutory Trust or the DST, which you have probably heard about. We've talked about it a little bit, I think, in the past. But, and this is a, a something to have in your pocket, right? You need to know somebody like Ben. And so you can help that investor, you know, in that moment when, when you don't have the deal or what, whatever the situation may be, or maybe you personally, you're going to learn a lot from Ben today. Ben, welcome to the show. Uh, you have an expertise that I get questions about all the time and I am not the expert in. So looking forward to diving in uh, a little bit today because I know there's many past investors who are wondering about this as well as they are trying to invest uh, in syndications even with us and other operators uh, through a 1031 exchange or uh, you know DST and wondering, is that the right vehicle for them or is it not? Or they're trying to 1031 out of a property that they've owned for a long time or, you know, uh, thinking through those things and, and they need somebody like yourself that knows the answers, to yeah. all those uh, related questions. But before we do that, man, who, who has been, give us a little more about, you know, your all's business and what you are up to. Sure. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, for, for having us. Uh, we appreciate the, the opportunity for sure. It's great to be here. You know, I'm a financial advisor, but not your traditional financial advisor that's managing money, you know, stocks, bonds, annuities. I really specialize in working with accredited or high net worth clients, helping them to satisfy their 1031 exchanges uh, via the Delaware Statutory Trust. I've been doing it for 18 years. And, and prior to, actually, it's appropriate for the show, prior to Ahud Gersten, my business partner, and I starting the company, um, I spent 15 years on the syndication side of the business. So essentially, I was building or manufacturing the products that we then, that we now offer to our investors. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, who would, uh, so you said, you said high net worth uh, individuals, you know, I wonder, are most of them now, uh, would you say are in... How are they, what are they 1031 or, or you know, going into, uh, you know, say the majority that you are helping now? Is it multifamily? Is it another mm -hmm. deal of their own? Or are they, you know, going sure. into syndications? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we for every client, and, and I think we'll get into a little bit of this, but the, the DSTs, the minimums are small. It's $100,000. So um, we try to build, a, build balanced portfolios for our clients. So, you know, you take a million dollar exchange, for example, We'll break it up, you know, multifamily, um, industrial, uh, maybe senior housing. And then in some cases, we'll even, sp even sprinkle in like a single tenant triple net, just, just as like a stable, predictable income stream. Um, so the answer is uh, there's probably four or five, six food groups that we stick to uh, that tend to be defensive and resilient in good or bad times. So Ben, you know, why don't you clarify like, uh, and even for those who don't know, uh, we'll go uh, pretty elementary for a moment, but then we'll yeah. we'll advance here. But you know, why 1031 exchange? Maybe some of the tax benefits, right? For our you know for investors, uh, but then also clarify like 1031, you know, the DST, uh, and, sure. and I because I think there's, some people ask like, well, is that two different things? Is it the right. same thing? Is it do I need both of those things? Is that you know, right? What's the relationship there? So maybe clarify some of that right. too before we jump in. Absolutely. So a 1031 exchange has been in the tax code for 100 years. And it basically allows investment property owners to uh, defer paying taxes on the sale of their investment property 
as long as they exchange the proceeds from sale into other replacement property. I think you've done 1031 exchanges on your show before. Mm -hmm. The DST or Delaware Statutory Trust is, is a, 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 a an ownership structure that, that satisfies 1031 exchange. So it's just the type of ownership that falls within the 1031 exchange umbrella. And, you know, just briefly, the DST is like an entity, right? It's like an LLC, a partnership, a corporation. And it was created in the 80s. Uh, and it's a structure where you have one trustee that manages the trust on behalf of up to 499 beneficial owners. And so it provides for fractionalized ownership. Now, it wasn't set up for 1031 purposes initially, but in 2004, under IRS uh, ruling 2004-86, the IRS came out and said, look, this type of fractionalized ownership constitutes real property ownership and therefore can satisfy exchanges. So DSTs were really created or born, if you will, in 2004 from, from a 1031 exchange perspective. Okay. So uh, who would be the the prime person that would need a DST or not? Right. 90% of our clients today that are investing in DSTs are those that have owned and managed uh, real estate for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and they're tired of active management. Because the DST provides for a, a passive management solution, it provides passive income. So folks that have owned real estate for a long time, they're highly appreciated real estate. They don't want to be in active management. They're going to sell their property. They obviously don't want to pay taxes. So they have the opportunity to exchange into what I consider a turnkey replacement property solution. And let me just give you an example of the DSTs, uh, so the, a little bit of a visualization. It made a DST could be a hundred million dollar multifamily, you know, four hundred unit multifamily property in Dallas, Texas, or a fifty million dollar, you know, senior housing, uh, memory care assisted living in Raleigh, North Carolina, or a hundred million dollar self storage property or portfolio within the Phoenix area. Right? Those are examples of, of DST. So they're institutional quality um, real estate that are acquired and syndicated and put in these DST packages, they're stabilized, they're income producing, so that investors, again, when they sell their investment property, they can exchange a portion or all of their proceeds in one or multiple DSTs very quickly, and it provides passive income and, of course, gets them away from the active management responsibilities. Okay, so how do we, you know, how does that investor find that opportunity, right? To, you know, the different types of DSTs, or like you said, you all would help them diversify, right? Across sure. a number of them, I guess. How, how does that, how does that work for that investor? So, and maybe, um, so is it the case where, you know, maybe they have a property, um, they're selling, and then they would 1031 into, mm -hmm. say, a number of DSTs. Sure. Uh, is that accurate? Uh, and maybe through, uh, you know, with help from somebody like yourself? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the DSTs are distributed, if you will, through financial advisors. So you have to be securities licensed to offer uh, the, the DST products. So yeah, anybody that's looking to do a 1031 exchange and likes the idea of being passive, they can uh, connect with, with me or another financial advisor um, who can assist them in, in finding the right DSTs. Uh, and, and maybe uh, we're going to go back to more of the past investor side, but, I, but even on the operator side, how do they, you know, get their opportunities, you know, to become right. part of a DST or something like right. that? Yeah. So like uh, on the sponsor side or the syndicator side, um, you know, I'm just going to use one as an example, Cantor Fitzgerald, right? A 75 year old investment bank, multi-billion dollar company on the East coast. They're in the DST business. So Cantor Fitzgerald, you know, using their vast real estate platform, they they source deals, whether it be off market or through one of their brokerage companies, and they'll go in and, and, and buy, you know, a hundred million dollar property. They'll stroke a check for a hundred million bucks. They'll take it down and then again, put it with it, put it inside this DST um, and then turn around and offer it to investors through financial advisors like myself. So it's not, say, for 
every operator or every operator may not have the opportunity to say put their put a project in a DST. Is that accurate? Yes, it has to uh, it has to fit within the guidelines of a DST. And there are limitations with DSTs. I don't think we have enough time to cover them on this call, <laughs> but um, there are limitations. So it, it, if something fits within the box, right, um, it could very well uh, work in a, in a DST. Again, there's, these are these are opportunistic by nature, right? Who do these cater to? These are catering to retirees or those who are, will be yeah. retiring soon that are looking for stable, predictable income. So, you know, really core assets in primary, secondary, uh, or tertiary markets. Speak to, uh, I mean, some of the benefits that we wouldn't think about or know of, you know, as far as, uh, you know, if I'm 1031, you know, out of something into a, a DSC or through somebody like sure. yourself, what are some of those benefits? In addition to the being a passive management and monthly passive um, income, also from a, a leverage or a debt perspective, when these DSTs are, are uh, syndicated, the sponsor company secures the debt that's in place. And the sponsor is the sole guarantor on that loan. And so DST investors that need to meet certain debt requirements for their 1031 exchange, or maybe they can't get pre-approved through a bank, or maybe the financing that they get is not attractive, they can exchange into a DST that has leverage and satisfy the, the, the debt requirement, you know, without having to go to a bank. What about, uh, uh, you know, uh, drawbacks uh, from going this route for a DST? Sure. Yeah. So it's very important to know there's two, there's two uh, items that uh, are potential roadblocks for some investors, especially those that, you know, uh, want to be in control. So number one, DSTs, you're giving up all control. You're putting your full faith and trust in the sponsor company or the syndicator that's putting these together. There's no voting on signing new leases or when to sell, any, any material changes. So giving up control is, is potentially one downside. Like we have, we have many clients that say, look, I don't want control. I want to get, you know, I want to give control up, but control is one. And then these are illiquid investments. Right. So there's no formal secondary market for an investor to to exchange out. So you're in there, you know, for on average five to seven year duration. I, that was I, I was wondering what happens then. Right. You know, they they exit the deal. What happens? Right. No, great question. So um, they exit the deal. The investor will be in the same 1031 exchange position that he or she was when they you know, prior to investing in the DST. So they sell, you get your money back. Hopefully there's some appreciation. You've collected income along the way. And now you're in a position where you're going to do another 1031, or you can do another 1031 exchange. You're not married to DSTs. So maybe you say, you know what? Uh, I didn't like the DST. I'm going to go buy direct property again. You can do that. Or it was a great experience in this DST. I'm going to roll back into another DST that's available today or cash out and pay tax. So all options are always on the table. So individually, as that investor, as I invested in that DST, we exited the deal, I can roll right over into another DST at that time. There's no yes, penalties sir. or anything like that? No. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and then what about, I was thinking about, uh, you know, as we were talking a little bit about it a minute ago, you know, putting all the faith in the syndicator, right? And we talk about it often on the show as far as vetting the sponsor, the syndicator, right? I mean, there's, you know, people have lists of questions, right? Often that, and I don't blame them a bit, right? They want right. to know who they're working with. You know, how much can they talk to the sponsor? How much do they know about this sponsor when they're doing that? Obviously, if it's somebody, um, you know, that's, you know, a, a massive organization, right? right? You know, something like you referred to earlier, probably not going to get to talk to that that owner, right, or or those owners, uh, but I just wondered, you know, how does what yeah. does that process look like vetting, you know, that operator? Yeah, no, you'd be surprised. the The sponsors are very accessible, even the largest, for the most part. There's a couple that that may be a little challenging, but for the most part, um, you can be very interactive and connect with the sponsors on a one on one basis. Just taking a step back in terms of vetting prior to starting Perch Wealth. Uh, several years ago, I, I spent 15 years on the sponsor syndication side in this business. 
So I was acquiring the real estate. I was doing the underwriting. I was doing the due diligence. I was, um, you know, structuring all sorts of private real estate deals, private REITs, business development companies, funds, ticks, DSTs, you name it. And so I'm intimately familiar with the market. And, and today, just to give you an example, um, you know, there's, there's 50 different active sponsors or syndicators. And today there's 125 different DST offerings. And I don't care if you're the most sophisticated real estate professional in the world or attorney or CPA, this is a different market. It's a different market. You can't just pick up one of these 300 page PPMs and understand what's going on. And they all look very pretty, right? You look at the brochures. And so that's the value that, that, uh, that we bring to the table is really understanding this market, understanding the offerings, knowing the sponsors personally, We'll take at any given any given time when we're working with a client, we'll recommend six to eight out of the 125 offerings out there, right? Those that we believe are the strongest in the market based on you know X, Y, and Z. Um, and so we have that dialogue with investors. And then of course, at any time we can pull in the sponsors so that they hear, you know, directly from the horse's mouth. And what about uh, you know, just the the future of uh, DSTs or trends or where's it? You know, where do you see it going? Um, you know, years from now, or is this? Sure. Yeah. You know, what do you expect? You know, we're at the, we're at the the forefront of of a market that's going to grow significantly over the next ten to twenty years, um, and it's really a function of demographics, right? Baby boomers and seniors really control the majority of the wealth in the country. A lot of that wealth is in private real estate that they directly manage today, and as I said, um, they are tired. They are tired and they're looking for options or solutions that can move them from active to passive. So regardless of real estate trends, the DST market is going to grow in, in my, in my you know, opinion. I've seen it for the past 18 years grow. It will continue going, going forward. What else, what else do we need to know about DSTs, Ben, that I wouldn't even know to ask you? I was just thinking about you know, what's the investor that's listening right now wanting to right. know? Is they're considering this or, or maybe some questions that you may get sure. often that uh, that people want to know is they're going down this path. Sure. I mean, going back to your question about the, the you know, what are the benefits of the positives? Just want to throw out a, a couple of uh, ideas. Number one, you know, you're constrained. There's a time constraint for doing 1031 exchanges, right? You're limited to 45 day ID period. You have to close in 180 days. So again, I just want to reiterate the fact that DSTs are already acquired. They're owned, they're stabilized, they're income producing. So it's something that you can identify very quickly and, and have uh, really surety of close, which is very difficult in, in, in today's market. That's another big benefit of the DSTs. Let's say you're down. Let's say you're in your ID period and you're down to your last three days, for example. You know, you could get involved with the DST. It would be a quick due diligence process, but you can get involved and get your exchange done to avoid paying you know, those, those taxes. I also point out that, that the, the, the timeline to close is also very short. Again, for all the same reasons I just stated, you know, if you have identified DSTs and you're ready to move forward, we can close you within a week. And once you're closed, the distributions start accruing immediately and they're paid out on a monthly basis. So there's a lot of, of great uh, benefits with the DST. And, and I'll tell you the, they're widely unknown. DST is a great solution, but they're widely unknown. Yeah. And so I, it's important to point out that, you know, CPAs, attorneys, real estate brokers, realtors, again, 95% of these folks, they have no idea they exist. So I want to say it on the front end, if you talk to your CPA or attorney and say, hey, what's going on with these DSTs? They may not know. They may not know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fair. <laughs> I think that's a good thing to point out as well. Uh, I think often, depending on who your advisor is, right, and what their focus is, they may not uh, know yeah. of something like this. Why you need somebody like Ben uh, on your team, or you can talk to somebody that's very familiar. Um, no doubt about it. I was uh, so you know. I, I guess one example I was thinking about. I wanted to make sure we answered this because I, I get I get calls all the time from uh, or often, pretty frequently, where it's like uh, Whitney, I've got a I've got a building that I'm selling and and I need a 1031 into something. Do you have anything? 
right? right? You know, and unfortunately, often we don't at that time, or you know, right. or whatever it may be. Uh, and so what's the, you know, I mean, like this would be a good avenue for an investor like that, right? Um, they could they could come to somebody like yourself. What is the kind of, and you mentioned some timelines there, but I guess what's the kind of drop dead, we got to have this much time to get them into something, you know, if they're uh, uh, exiting exiting something through a 1031 to get into a DST. Yeah. Well, you you can identify on day 44 or, or even on day 45 if if you needed to. So you could wait to the very last minute. And in fact, it brings up a good point. There are many investors that prefer to own direct, but they use DSTs as a backup plan. Okay. Right. Right. Um, and I, I'm just going to give you an example. Uh, hopefully this will illustrate some of the, the power be, behind the DST. You know, I, I you know, let's say that little Mrs. Smith is selling a, a, a you know a two million dollar rental property in Southern California. She's dependent upon the income. She can't just um, she she's dependent upon the income, um, and so in looking at DSTs, I'm sorry. Can you cut some of this stuff? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, little Mrs. Smith in Southern California is selling a two million dollar uh, property. She can exchange into, you know, for two million bucks in Southern California, she can buy, you know, a, a duplex, maybe a triplex if, if she's lucky. Instead, using the DSTs, little Mrs. Smith can take the two million and, and spread it, diversify her risk geographically and by sector, right? And it, so maybe maybe we put three hundred thousand dollars in a self storage property, three hundred thousand dollars in a single tenant triple net, three hundred thousand dollars in a senior housing. So to create that that diversification to mitigate risk in such a way, it you know provides a lot more stability of income to Mrs. Smith. And so you know that's what we do all, all day long. We work with the retirees that are just looking for passive income that don't want to take, you know, unnecessary risk exposure. And we can do that by laddering or building diversified DST portfolios. No, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Well, Ben, what's a, what's a way you all recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? Well, I would say the people. Um, it's all about the people. And it's so often overlooked. Um, you know, I was in the corporate world for so long. And uh, in, in my opinion, the, you know, the people weren't valued as they should be. And so we have a tremendous team, first class, CFAs, CPAs, MBAs, JDs, just tremendous, tremendous people that also operate from a, a, a moral and, and ethical high ground. So that's really what we've we've done. And that's what we focused on building initially. And so that would be my recommendation, Whitney. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I completely agree <laughs> that it's, it's all about the people. Uh, and yeah. Uh, what about, uh, what's your best source for meeting new investors right now for your all's business? Our centers of influence, if you will, are are really CPAs and attorneys, um, qualified intermediaries. Um, but we also, uh, we're also hosting events, you know, really across the country, you know, dinners, educational dinners or seminars that we'll bring in uh, clients to. So those, you know, between referral sources referrals from those centers of influence and hosting, you know, lunch or dinner events. That's, that's primarily where we generate most of our business. What's your uh, best advice for passive investors right now? I would say, be careful. You, you, you have to know who you're working with and what you're investing in. Uh, we're in a very dynamic, uh, uncertain market as we stand here today. And so it's all about, in my opinion, yeah, understanding what you're investing in, knowing who you're working with, and investing in defensive, resilient type of investment strategies. What are some of the most important metrics that you track? Could be personally or professionally. Pickleball, my friend. Pickleball. <laughs> I'm a huge pickleball guy. I'm not that good yet. But so I want to, my tracking is the, your rating, right? So I think I'm at a three, I want to get to a three, five. <laughs> That's front and center in my life. Outside of work, pickleball is front and center in my life. That's funny. That's awesome. Bro. You got to track <laughs> it so you know you're improving, right? Yeah, that's right.
Any other habits that you're disciplined about? You know, in, in our business, you, you really have to be structured. Uh, we're, we're, we're very busy. And so, and I struggle with this, um, but you want to be structured and disciplined in each and every day, you know, block out time for client calls or prospecting, block out time to take care of obviously your existing business and block out time to take care of yourself, whether it be pickleball or, or something else. It's just that balance is so important. And uh, I'm constantly striving to get it. And how do you like to give back? We, or I should say I, we're big in our church. And so, you know, definitely giving back through through our church. And also me personally, uh, giving giving back to helping people, just helping people, whether they're new 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 employees with, with us or, or not, always helping people and taking what what you know I've learned and 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 helping whoever I can. Awesome, Ben. Well, you've helped us today and, and many listeners, no doubt about it, uh, thinking through this Delaware statutory trust. And is this something that we need, I need, they need, you know, like, who does this apply to? I think you've answered that in many ways between the benefits or maybe drawbacks or who should consider it uh, and why. Uh, I think it's a, a great avenue for even many of our, you know, investors, especially when, uh, you know, or if you have a deal as a, an operator that you have somebody 1031 into and it falls through, right? You know, in time that they could still, you know, have something like this, that they could still uh, have the benefits, you know, of the exchange, right? right. Um, and, and not just fall through altogether. Uh, and so uh, grateful uh, for your time today uh, and just elaborating on that. I know you'll be a great connection for many of the listeners as well, but how can they get in touch with you? Sure. You could call me uh, at on my cell phone, 818-269. 4972, or you can email me at B Carmona, C A R M O N A, at perchwealth.com. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope that you have learned a lot from the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you're telling your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show and how they can also build wealth in real estate. You can also go to lifebridgecapital.com and start investing today. 